Hi there, it's um, Neil at um, Haver Castle. Um, got a very special kind of a guest um, for you to kind of uh, listen to. Uh, a colleague here, Paul, was head gardener here at Haver Castle, goodness me, 21 years ago. And we're standing here on our herbaceous border, the long border here, that Paul was one of his main projects when he was in charge here at Haver Castle. So we're going to have a little chat with Paul, his life, how he started at Haver Castle, um, his legacy here, and how, you know, we're we're progressing here. We're going to get Paul some advice and thoughts of are we doing a good job as good as you did 21 years ago? First time I've, well, I've never met you. I've heard your name mentioned many, many years since I've been here. But just start to really know what it was like at Heaver 21 years ago, what you enjoyed, and how your life started here. Well, lovely, Neil. Great to be here and coming back after 21 years. But yes, the, I've certainly seen changes here while I've been here, but they are all to the good and for your yourself and your staff you're doing an absolutely fantastic job taking heaver forward a garden is like a living outside room it can't stand still it's got mm -hmm. to go forward and you and your guys are doing an absolutely fantastic job oh, thanks it's such a please to see from a head gardener looking to another head gardener and the camaraderie that we all have especially in this wonderful place but it's been lovely to be invited back to look at what i conceived when i first started here mm -hmm. i came in 95 and looked after this wonderful garden for nearly eight years. I'm head gardener for five um, and then head gardener up until I left in just after 2000-2001. Um, but the conceiving of the long border was something that we had when I was here we won the garden of the year, the Historic Houses Association Garden oh, of wow, the Year yeah. in, in 1995. And so we had the idea what can we do to recreate winning that and we looked back in our archives and found out that there was a long border here back in William Waldorf Astor's day. Oh, wow. They actually made a long border. So we thought with the management here, what a good idea to do to bring this garden back. So in the January of 1997, straight after Christmas and the new year, we came in with a mechanical turf cutter. Took This was just a solid mm. grass bank right the way back up to the trees and shrubs. We removed all the turves, we took them down into the glass house area, made a big turf loam stack there, which we used oh, in the wow. compost. Yeah, so we used what we took off, yeah. and then I had the wonderful job of double digging, <laughs> 110 metres of this border. We had a local farmer come in with some well-rotted manure, two big trailer loads. That was then transported to me on the border, and was put in regular intervals, and I double dug that right through to the middle of February. We then left the border for two months to weather, rain, frost, mm. everything on it to break it down. Plants arrived middle of April. They came from Blooms of Bressingham, which is a very nostalgic, yeah, gonna say. very preeminent, you know, yeah. um, top quality. They're good perennial yeah, border. Yeah. They were dropped off outside in the jousting field. Um, they was all gradually brought in. And they was all laid along the lawn edges here. And then we marked out the borders into four sections. So the planting was repeated four times along. Mm -hmm. And we marked them all out with silver sand. Got yeah. all the semicircles and circles in where we wanted to do what we wanted to plant in. Planted them all in. And then we caned up with labels exactly what section of plants was going to go in each section. And then we started from the bottom end, worked our way all the way up. And the planting day, I can remember, is etched in my brain. It started on May the 3rd, and I finished on May the 23rd in 97. And I think we opened in July. We had wow. an official opening in yeah. July. Yeah. And I think I'm right in thinking we had somewhere in the region of six to 8,000 plants. Goodness, mate. Which I just had one other colleague who helped yeah. me in the What planting. size were they? Were they kind of coming in like litre, two litres? Normal sort of litre pots, pots, yeah, litre yeah, pots yeah. coming in basically yeah. and then we was doing them all in groups of sort of five to six God. to get a nice big effect um, and it did take two to three years to... Yeah but you can... You can see now, even now I know not all the plants are here. No but, but the foundation is here. Foundation is there. I think a lot, a lot of plants we've just sort of enhanced it, the same planting structure is still here, the sections, the colour coordinations and whatever, and really just sort of enhanced it. Exactly. And, and it also just, you had problems with rabbits as well? Yeah, we had the, um, <laughs> the great to see the chicken while still here, we was, <laughs> at night time I used to live just over the back here, and I used to come around with my pet dog and there was rabbits would come running in, yeah. they'd try and get in here, and we just had a little grass strip along here, which yeah. was a tedious for mowing. This was obviously what we're standing on now, the paving mm -hmm. slabs, this was just gravel. And I'm so pleased to see now, this has all been redone, fantastic idea, 
Alcamilla Mollis, the lady's mantle on the front yeah. to soften the edge. Um, and I think it just looks stunning. It's absolute stunning, and the credits to say you and your guys for keeping it going the well, way it is. Well, I think we can kind of, you know, you know credit each other. You, you set it off the foundations, you know, the planting's great. And it's just, you mm. know, we think 21 years down the line, it's still here. It's still here. And I think we just, say, yeah. we're curators and we just mm. look after the love of this place. Mm -hmm. I think when you've been here and you work here, mm. it's just got that attraction and you, and you just love it and you've got the affinity to see how well it is. And what I love is the way that it moves forward. Yeah, the guard is good, just yeah. continually going yeah. forward and you're looking to make it better and achieving better things if you possibly can and, and I'm sure in your days how did you water it we now have irrigation automatic yeah, we, irrigation we did have a sprinkler system <laughs> yeah. we did have an aluminium system which we would connect up and it would just oscillate backwards oscillate, and yeah, forwards yeah, yeah. Um, but we did it in the early days because it was on a bank yeah a lot of water and if we had heavy rain soil would come right, down yeah, yeah. Um, so gradually as the plants matured and they got all their root systems in we used to mulch it twice a year. We used to mulch it in the spring and then mulch it again in the autumn after it was cut down. And it generally looked after itself until the spring. Didn't have much pest disease problems at all. Yeah. Um, I was going to mention that. Yeah, pest and disease. Not is, a lot. It is the rabbits, but we sort of knocked that on the head. But we had yeah. so much, even yeah. like looking through now with the phloxes, the hemorrhagalis, the roses. Yeah. You know, we used to get the white fly, we used to get the green fly, but then with a lot of the bird life in the garden and yeah. a lot of the flowers a lot of the wildlife did it for you so I wasn't a great one for putting chemicals down no even back in those days we were trying to be organically yeah. as best that we could and do. I think we've kind of carried on you know 20 or years down the line we don't spray you know for aphids and things like that you kind of leave it to mother mm. nature the bird That's life right. is great and exactly a bit of green fly does, doesn't so, matter so, and so, I think so it's, it's testimony you look at yeah. it now and it's um beautiful oh, that's great fantastic. here's to the next 20 years exactly superb